Hi friends, in this uh, video we will study the, we will try to revise the anatomy of the cecum. So cecum is here, this is the cecum. So cecum is a large blind sac forming the commencement of the large gut and forms an asymmetric sac furnished with tinea coli. So this is the asymmetric sac which uh, indicate the commencement of the large intestine and uh, it has tinea coli just like the any other part of the the large intestine situation it is present in the right iliac fossa this is the iliac fossa here and within the right iliac fossa it will be present and above there will be above the lateral half of the inguinal ligament here if you imagine the inguinal ligament it is present in the lateral half of the uh, above the lateral half of the inguinal ligament and the size is almost 6 centimeters and the breadth is 7.5 cm. Length is 6 cm and breadth is 7.5 cm. This is very peculiar. The other uh, uh, organ where the length is lesser than the breadth is the prostate. The shape is as we said asymmetric. So the, there is one larger sac and a smaller sac on the other side. So it is asymmetric. Type, there are different types of the uh, the cecum, the, the, the most primitive type is called a fetal type or conical type where it is cone like and it is present in almost 2%. The second is infantile type or intermediate type where it will be present in 3% and the commonest will be the normal type, adult type or it is also called as the ampullary type where we have seen one sac is larger than the, the second sac and it is present in almost 90% of the uh, people. Okay. And there is the fourth type that is called as the exaggerated type where the appendix is very, very close to the ileocecal junction. Usually it will be almost 2 centimeters below the ileocecal junction, this is the appendix. Uh, but in exaggerated type it will be very close to the, uh, the ileocecal junction that is present in almost 4 to 5 percent of the people. Okay, coming to the abnormal position, depending on the rotation of the gut, the, there will be different abnormal position of the, uh, the cecum. Uh, and the most commonest one of the uh, common will be on the left ilio, uh, left iliac fossa instead of being on the right side it will be present in the left side then uh, uh, near the umbilicus or it is subhepatic below the liver and the left lumbar sometimes it is more exaggerated gone below and it is in the right lumbar type and sometimes it is present in the pouch of the glass. These are the abnormal positions where it might be present. It might be present in the left iliac fossa instead of on the right. It can be present in the umbil near the umbilicus, subhepatic, right lumbar as well as the pouch of the Douglas. Okay, this is the rotation of the gut and you see keep on seeking the different positions of the cecum during rotation. So it is now it in the subhepatic type and now it is subhepatic below it was in the near the umbilicus now subhepatic type and it is now exaggerated into the the iliac fossa so if it remains as such uh, without further development then it will be in those abnormal position this is the normal position it has come back to the right iliac fossa okay topography of the cecum it is present in a triangular area above by the transtubercular plane passing through two tubercles below by the, the fold of the groin or the lateral half of the inguinal ligament and medially by the right lateral uh, plane. Okay, this is the area where it will, can be traced. Coming to the peritoneal relations, it is as a rule covered by all sides with the peritoneum. Okay, coming to the general relations, anteriorly we have the anti-abdominal wall, greater momentum as well as the coils of intestine which will be lying on the anterior surface of this uh, cecum. Posteriorly, we have the right iliosuous muscle. So this is the, uh, uh, the iliacus muscle and suos will be here together they are called as iliosuous. Then the femoral nerve, genitofemoral nerve all will be present posteriorly. Above it continues as the ascending colon and below we have seen the lateral half of this is the inguinal ligament. And medially we have the ileum which will be opening into the cecum as iliocecal junction as well as the vermiform appendix. Coming to the histological features, it has all the four features which will be present in the uh, most of the part of the, the intestine. It is the mucosa, submucoma, uh, submucosa, muscularis externa and the serosa. Uh, the, the epithelium lining uh, of this uh, cecum will be by the simple columnar uh, epithelium with numerous goblet because the large intestine, numerous goblet and divide of the villi. Okay, coming to the muscular cord, the uh, outer longitudinal layer will be condensed to two, three areas. These are called as tinea coli. 
okay so there are three tinea which will represent on all the three sides so this is the tinea coli okay coming to the features of the uh, interior of the cecum you can see two openings here one is called as the ileocecal orifice which will be present on the posterior medial wall near the uh, the junction of the transtubular as well as the right lateral plane and it is guarded by uh, two lips uh, by a valve with two lips upper horizontal as well as the lower concave then there is appendicular orifice almost 2 cm below this uh, first opening and this is guarded by a valve called as valve of Gerlach okay so these are the two uh, orifices. One is the ileocecal orifice, the second is the appendicular orifice. And around the ileocecal orifice, there is a spinter like structure which will have, uh, uh, act as a spinter. Coming to the arterial supply, the arterial supply to the cecum is by the anterior and posterior cecal branches of the inferior division of the iliocolic artery. If you see here, this is the iliocolic artery, it has an anterior cecal branch and a posterior cecal branch, which will be supplying the anterior and posterior surfaces of the cecum. Okay. Uh, so here also you can see the anterior cecal and the posterior cecal arteries and branches of the iliocecal artery, colic artery. Coming to the venous drainage, venous drainage is by the similar veins corresponding to the arteries into the superior mesenteric vein. This is the superior mesenteric vein. Coming to the nerve supply, in nerve supply, the parasympathetic is by both the vagi and the sympathetic is by, by the uh, superior mesenteric plexus coming from T10 to L1. Coming to the lymphatic drainage, it will be into the iliocolic lymph nodes, which will be finally draining into the superior mesenteric group of uh, pre as well as the para aortic group of lymph nodes. Coming to the last aspect that is the applied aspect, uh, this will be acts as a guide for the internal obstruction, uh, especially leading to uh, the intersusception as well as the amoebic dysentery. This is the common site for the amoebic dysentery. This is the picture showing the intersusception where a part of one part of the tube will uh, enter into the other side, uh, into the other part of the tube leading to intersternal obstruction. This is the normal one, this is the intersusception. Okay where the weakness of the, the wall of the, uh, uh, the intestine will lead to interception. And this is commonest at the cecum. So here you can see at the cecum there is interception. So this is all about the, the cecum in general. Thank you very much. Hi friends, if you like my video and if you want to see similar kind of videos in the future, subscribe to my channel as well as like the video, press the bell icon so that you can get regular updates and you will be the first to get the updates. Then you can also comment as well as share this video with all your friends so that all can benefit from this. Thank you very much.